Hey gearheads, welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there is Tucker. Yep, that's me. And we're in a fun, quirky, uh, say it, uh, little vehicle from Kia yeah. in the 2023 Kia Soul GT line. Yeah. And in this video, we're going to see how this fun, interesting little cube of a vehicle fits our family of three. Stay tuned. Holly, another one of those interesting weeks where we got this on Tuesday. Wednesday, I flew to LA. So you've had this to yourself and have formed opinions sans me. Very curious your thoughts on this because we've had the Seltos, which we kind of liked. You tried to kill us in. <laughs> But what are your thoughts here uh, on the Kia Soul? Um. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not where I thought that was going at all. I do have weird feelings about this car because I like it, but I don't. Okay. <laughs> so we will I, unpack all of that. <laughs> unpack it all. <laughs> Um, welcome to my life and what goes on in my head. Okay, so shall we stick to the formula? Outside, inside driving? Yes, I will <laughs> do my full thought dump okay. in summary after we go piece by piece. Okay. How about that? Exterior styling. Um, I like it, but I don't. <laughs> my goodness okay i'm sensing a theme um i mean i like that it's a different looking car on the road mm -hmm. not many just straight up boxes on no i mean like when when a soul is coming down the street you know what it is mm -hmm. um yep. so i like it in that aspect um and that it's a fun little car mm -hmm. um it's a little bit too much of a cube for me. Okay. Interesting. I'm, I'm not sure that if I was looking for, I do like cars that you, I mean, you see it and you know what it is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just the regular person. I know you see a car, you know exactly what I mean, it there's, is. I mean, there's a row, like four of them, five of them at Chick-fil-A for yeah, delivery yeah. vehicles. But, yeah. um, um, but I just don't know that this is the one that I personally would gravitate to, but I know that this is a fun car and a fun design for the people that it's made for okay we know you like curves in vehicles this one mm -hmm. again very boxy there are a, some, some up front um there's another one right there they're everywhere um but yeah so yeah there's not as many like curves deep curves on this car on the design um but there are some interesting design features that like the back tail lights mm -hmm. and stuff on the back um that look different than other cars that I think make up for the fact that it's kind of just a box. So now our model being the GT line does not have the contrasted painted roof that you liked in the Seltos, uh, but you can get here on this. That's another thing you liked from your Mini Cooper. Mm -hmm. So you I can option them a little bit differently sure. than, than what we have here. Okay, inside. Inside. Um, inside. I would say I like it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's any, well, I take that back. There are some um, fun pops of color in here, mm -hmm. like the red, and the red is not red. 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 <laughs> Mommy, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I forgot to put our son in the car. Okay, it's not. It's, Woman of the night. <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice classy red, okay. we'll say that. It's a nice classy red. It's not in your face and it's not gaudy. Okay. How better? Better. Better. Yes. Thank you. Um, but there's little hints of the accent red mm -hmm. all around it and I really like that. That's a lot of fun. Um, the steering wheel is nice and soft, not too cushy, but nice and soft. It's got the flat bottom, which mm -hmm. makes it feel like you're driving like a sports car. Mm -hmm. um, All the curves we're missing outside there. are here in spades. <laughs> it's like yeah. 
lots of round uh, flowing curbs in this from the wraparound, from the windshield, this, yeah. uh, everything round. And I do like the purple lights. Yeah, up here, okay. which if we change it to sport drive mode, turn ah. red. Ah, is but, that red? It looks pink to me. I'm yeah. saying it's pink. It's kind of a salmon, but no, yeah. it's not. Uh, but it looks like you're going into a tunnel, so mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, very interesting interior in here for me. Yeah. Um, I will say of all the vehicles that we've tested for this channel, this one reminds me the most of your Mini Cooper inside, and it's just whimsy. Mm -hmm. That that would be the one word the whimsy. I would really yeah. attribute to this car is whimsical. Yeah, I guess the inside of a Mini or the inside of a VW Bug mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of is kind of whimsical. Whimsical with the curves and the colors. And then you do have the colors in the doors, mm -hmm. which I like and I don't like. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Why should I expect anything else with I this do, review? I do like the colors in the door. They just, um, I like the idea of that feature. Okay. But in practice, it's a little. Like so that. you're talking about like the strobe lights? The strobe lights. Okay. Which we did discover. Uh, I can't do it because we're not in the park. Uh, but we can go in here to uh, the vehicle setup and vehicle and i think i'm already one menu in too deep we'll hit the home button there we go sound mood lamp mm -hmm. so you can change from a strobe light but yes we're not in park yeah you don't to have a to. solid ambient lighting right you don't have to have that um and i wouldn't if i had this car um that's not the case because we've had other cars that have the strobe lights mm -hmm. and with the music it just feels a lot smoother but not this is just like <laughs> I have not experienced it. Uh, you, yeah, it's, you've had it's the car. It's alarming the yeah. first time you see it. <laughs> so, uh, but we do get fun stuff like dual uh, zone automatic climate, heated front seats, oh, that's nice. uh, Qi wireless charger, mm -hmm. USB A, USB C, mm -hmm. um, storage. It's an easy oh, um, infotainment center yeah, to with navigate. Wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Ten and a quarter inches of screen real estate here. Yep. Uh, Typical Kia interface. We've liked them all. Yeah. Um, the engine start stop button to turn it on is in a unique place, but it's not like buried hidden behind the steering wheel. So once you get used to where it is, the I have it. Automatic start stop. No, I'm oh, turning the vehicle on. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the automatic start stop. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> yes. And it it's hidden over here behind yeah. the steering wheel. The, the wrong um, thing to hide. But it yeah, and you have to turn it off every single time. Mm -hmm. And it is very noticeable when it when the engine turns on and turns back on. And I will say I've been stopped the first car at a stop light at a red light mm -hmm. and with very anxious people behind me get ready to go. And it took a second for okay. it to get up and go because it the engine had stopped. And that's annoying to me. Yeah. Yeah. So. Failure. Yeah, I know you could take it off. The, but again, yeah. if you're going to have that feature, I would like for it to work. Yeah. Well. Well. Quickly. Quickly. Uh, before we get in too deep into driving dynamics, because we do have Tucker's Wobbly Head Test coming out. Mm -hmm. These seats. So comfy. How about these they seats? They cradle, you know. Yeah. Like so nice. going uh, again with the flat bottom steering wheel making you feel like you're in something sporty. Man, the, the side bolsters on these are like. Hugging it's you. like a warm hug. Yeah. Which, if you turn your heated seat it on. It is a warm but, hug. Yeah. Yes. So nice. Yep. The seats are nice. Yeah. No complaints about the seat. And, and there are um, geared power control. Power. Oh power like, where control you going? Another soul going to buy right there. For you, not for But me. not for you. Yeah. But that's okay. Manual seat over here. You don't care about me. Let's see. No, don't. Um, which I guess is a nice segue to how much room I have over here. Not, Not a much. lot. And we'll transition from that to actually putting Tucker's child safety seat in both rearward facing, which means scooting the seat all the way up and in its current position right now. Putting Tucker's child safety seat in the back is going to be a little 
little bit of a tight fit, uh, especially in rear facing mode for this front seat. But I'm gonna go ahead and move this front seat forward because I know, well, that ain't just gonna work. So fully forward, we'll bring in Tucker's Graco Extendifit Fit uh, convertible car seat. This is the same car seat that he used when he was rearward facing. So you can see here, uh, this is exactly where he would ride. And yeah, I moved that front seat all the way forward to get this into place. What does that mean for space for me up there? Let's take a look. Yep, that front seat is all the way up, which is probably going to be detrimental to me at 510. But it's not as bad as I thought it would be, actually. So with that door open, I can show you my knees are in the dash. That's kind of to be expected with the seat all the way up. But uh, I could ride back here for two years, maybe, <laughs> if I had to. But uh, let's go flip that car seat around because luckily for us, Tucker is now forward facing. So obviously that is not a long-term situation, but luckily for us, we are in forward facing mode now. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this top tether back behind ooh, <laughs> the headrest. And because we've got a hard parcel shelf in the back window, I'm actually gonna lean the seat forward to drop that down. Lower latch points are kind of buried in between the seat back and seat bottom fabric. So I'm really gonna have to poke around trying to find exactly where they are. There we go. And then we can really get in here with that front seat all the way up and poke around here on this side. My goodness, they really make these hard to find. Now, they are only on the out, outboard seats. They are not in the center seat. So if you want uh, to put a child seat there in the center, you can, but you're gonna be using the seatbelt method. And it is a little bit of a narrow center seat. So just something to note. But now let's go around to the back, put that top tether in, see just how easy the whole process is for this. Coming to the back of the Kia Soul GT line, we do have a very boxy overall shape, uh, which translates to very usable cargo space, more so than the numbers would lead you to believe. You can see here, we do have this hard parcel shelf uh, that I had to fish the top tether around and through, but it is an interesting one in that it folds 50-50, so you can put some taller stuff back here if you need to, and then flips up as well. It's kind of hinged uh, back there. so. Uh, rather interesting and unique on that regard. Coming down here, we do have top tethers all the way across for all three seats. So you could put a child seat there in the middle if you had to. And it's going to take two hands to truly tighten this down into place. But I will note that when you do, you're not destroying the seat material uh, by pulling uh, the top tether down tight. So we get a nice a firm seat back right here as opposed to something that has a lot of give. So not only do you get all this cargo space in here like this, which if you do fold the 60-40 split bench seat down, does give you a flat load floor. You can see the transition between the two there. The uh, sole also has a false load floor. You can see that's where your spare tire is and all the jack and equipment, but you can pull the cargo tray forward and then drop it down into the lowest position, giving you like four inches of additional height in here, which negates that flat load floor with the back seat, but does give you a massive cargo area uh, for storing larger items back here, taller items, whatever the case may be. So that is a nice touch as well. And this has a manual hatch that is very, light and easy to open and close and me at 510 i fit just underneath it so as far as manually opening and closing hatches go this one not too bad all right so that transitions nicely into storage i showed how much room is back there what are your thoughts of storage up here there's not much um i did i mean earlier i had to ride with my big old purse on my lap 
um, which I'm going to put it in the back seat. There's yeah. literally no space to put yeah. it up here. And I have short legs. Yeah. So, um, yeah. there's the, but this, the, the console is pretty nice and big. Yep. Um, and there's some storage on the side. I mean, there's a glove box Ooh, here, but, but I can't yeah, open, it open it because it I'm here. When you're there. So. Two cup holders. Uh, so, yeah. I mean. It's, it's right. a small car. It it's fits a small car. very well in our 1963 uh, garage. Like we can yeah. walk all the way around it, uh -huh. no problems. We can open the hatch with our garage door closed. Like it fits. It's a very yeah. good city car, very good commuter car. Uh, um, but the back, yeah, because it is a square shape, mm -hmm. is there. It's very big opening yeah. to fit lots of things. Surprisingly roomy back there. Very surprising. Um, but yes, they make Lots the most of, of the square shape. But uh, I guess all that transitions into how does it drive? We're about to turn on the historic brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas, uh, where we will do Tucker's Wobbly Head test. But you've put over 100 miles on this uh, mm -hmm. while I've been gone. What have been your experiences with it? I oh like boy. it and I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> I guess I could have answered that one for us. Um, as as we get onto the brick streets, we can see. I mean, it does well. It's it's a little rough. Yeah. It, Tucker, how are you doing back there? Great. Great. Here comes one. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little rough. <laughs> uh, not the best, but uh, I'm sure maybe your opinions might change when I pull out the uh, window sticker. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's not a luxury vehicle. <laughs> we have been spoiled on this channel. We have had some very nice vehicles. Down That's this true, track. but I will say one of your biggest complaints about the Mini Cooper was yeah. um, was that it was rough. Yeah, um, it rough. <laughs> And I feel like the only reason you're not making that complaint about this one is the seats are so comfy. Yeah. Because I feel like it's just about as rough as okay. the seat, this car. I, I will give you that one. Thank you. But the seats are just so comfy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, steering feel, heavy, light, mm, it's noticeable. Been fine. <laughs> it's been fine, but there have been a couple of um, things driving up on the open road. Mm. Should I talk about that or do you... I have not experienced it, but again, you've had more time on this. I've so. had more time on it and I've, and I've driven it on the highway, which you haven't done. Mm -hmm. And so it's just something to keep in mind if you are test driving a soul thinking about um, buying it. Um, on the highway, the steering wheel felt kind of like it feels like when you need an alignment. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I wouldn't say oh this car just needs an alignment is because it was like both sides mm -hmm. like when i was driving i felt like i was constantly having to fight it yeah. um like that kind of like lane keep assist not knowing what to do not knowing what to do okay. that's kind of how it felt and so driving it on the highway was a struggle yeah and i and and again i don't know if that's a soul issue or a just this vehicle yeah. has been 10,000 <laughs> 10,000 miles on this one so far. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of the highway, getting up to speed, how was that? Um, easy. I didn't have any problems. I actually used the cruise control. Oh, yeah. Um, the adaptive? The adaptive cruise control because I didn't, know didn't how to turn it know off. how to turn it off. <laughs> I still don't like adaptive cruise control, but I could say as far as adaptive cruise control goes, it was pretty smooth and intuitive. And she has adaptive cruise in her daily driver. She still doesn't like it. So we'll I just lay that out there. It is, yeah, I yeah. don't like adaptive cruise control. Um, I like to be in control. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I still need to get you in something with GM Super Cruise. We did Blue Cruise with the F-150 Lightning, but we need to do uh, GM Super Cruise with you. That'll yeah. be a fun one. But Tucker. Um, the other issue oh. I had, oh, sorry, go ahead. No. The other issue I had was with the key malfunctioning. Yeah, um, you've had technology in you. I don't know if it was just the key. <laughs> no. but so like I have the key on me, I'm holding it in my hand and I press the button to lock the door mm -hmm. on the front, which by the way, you have to press the button to lock 
to mm-hmm. lock and unlock the door. Um, and it kept buzzing me, telling me that the key was not in the car. And I'm like, well, duh. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to lock the car from the outside. I don't want the key in the car. Interesting. Um, so it wouldn't lock from the door. It wouldn't lock. And this has happened to me a few different times. And the only way I could get it to work is to start the car again and turn it off again. And then it worked. So. Just some gremlins. Some gremlins. In this one. So I don't know. That's something to be aware of. Yep. Yep. And then we do like Kias for their blind spot cameras. You have a full digital gauge cluster up there, but not in the same sense of most Kias, so there are no blind spot cameras on this, only the backup camera, which is good. Yeah, uh, the backup camera is good. We've experienced much worse cameras. <laughs> uh, visibility, it's a big uh, cube. Yeah, it's a big cube with lots of windows. Yeah. So, so I haven't had any issues there. Very easy to see out the back, big window back there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Any other things mm-hmm. that we're forgetting? Do you want my summary? Yes. Of why I don't know why I feel the way I feel? <laughs> yes, please. Enlighten us. Because I wouldn't say, like, I've enjoyed driving it in town, but I didn't enjoy driving it on the highway. So okay. that that's a big thing. But if you just, like, asked me, do you like a soul? I'd be like, oh, yeah, I like the soul. Um, and I don't know if it's, like, marketing ingrained in the formative years of my life. That's the little hamsters going, mm-hmm. you can get this, you can get that. I don't know if we can afford that. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> well, I didn't say it in the right I know. tone. I know. It'll be fine. Yes. Um, or I don't know if it just reminds me so much of the Mini Cooper that I have those mm-hmm. nostalgic feelings because that was my first car and I loved it. And this feels a lot like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that for us, the soul would not be in our lineup of cars to consider. We haven't even gotten to the price tag. And we haven't even got to the price tag yet. I'm just talking about driving, size, all of that. But I do think this car would be perfect for a single female college student. There's another one. (laughs) Yeah, there's another one. A college student or a first car Mm -hmm. or like, a single girl bopping around town, meeting up with friends and stuff like that. Um, I don't know that the size wise of it fits a family the best. Yeah, Tucker's a little cramped back there. I'm definitely a little cramped up here. If you had more than one kid yeah. in car seats, it would be, yeah. it would basically be like having le- less yeah. than a two seater. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, talking about who this is for. Good uh, segue to the price. Mm -hmm. Well, before we get into that, uh, EPA estimated 28 city, 33 highway, 30 combined, 159 even miles so far on this one, 28.9. So that's pretty good. I mean, it's mostly been city, but you did do that hour long drive to your parents and back. So yeah. Um, Katie, yes. I'm going to say 27. You cheated. No, I didn't. I swear. Is it 27? 27 to 20. I am so good at this game. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. That is uh, the price. This pr- needs to be like a state fair trick or something <laughs> that we make money off of. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> I firmly believe we need to make money off of this. And to that end, you can go see more of Holly's thoughts, opinions, behind the scenes stuff. We're about to go Thanksgiving grocery shopping. You can see us load. Uh, groceries up in this by finding her uh, on Facebook and Instagram at Female Consumer. You can find all things GT Garage Talk at GT Garage Talk. Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube, uh, or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for us, in the slightly too small for us, but very fun and um, whimsical. And affordable. And affordable. Another one. (laughs) And everywhere. Uh, Kia Soul GT line. Until next time, gearheads. Bye. Bye.
Oh, we didn't even talk about it. it says soul here on the seats. Oh, that'll get no bleepers. I feel like that is not <laughs> going to sway somebody. Oh no, I'm gonna buy it just for that. Just for that. Just for it says soul, soul on That's the seats. Soul. Tucker, what do you like? The red on the door. Yeah, mm -hmm. I figured as much. Mm -hmm. Definitely not like the last Kia we were in where you tried to waste us. How? What? I don't even remember what you're talking about. The bump? The off-roading that... adventure? <laughs> that you tried to waste us? That was not my fault. <laughs>